Welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie, keeper of my home. If this is your first time here, welcome. I like to do all things home here on my channel. Then today we have a long list on uh, the, of stuff that we need to get done. A couple of things I've gotten crossed off on there. I've already made bread and I've already taken all of our peppers and processed those. I just chopped them up and threw them in the freezer. I have berries written on that list. We did do those, but I have a few more left to do, I believe. I don't think I've gotten through all of them. We found a really great buy at our local grocery store. Um, raspberries, regular like $5.69, I think, $1.50. So we bought up quite a bit. We're flash freezing them in the freezer and then storing them in bags, so we'll have them. So I still have, I think, maybe one or two more containers and I still have some flash freezing that I've got to take out in bags. So we'll do that. Uh, right now what I'm doing is I am making some jam. I have some blueberry rhubarb jam that I want to make. Our blue, our rhubarb is still uh, going strong. I froze some of the blueberries so that I could use them for this purpose. And uh, I just want to get a couple batches of this jam made. It is so good. If you have never had it, I actually made it because I, I don't know, I had blueberries and I had rhubarb and I thought it would taste great. And I was not wrong. This is so good. And it, it's on my husband's list to make every year. He loves it. Uh, we make all kinds of things with it, so it's not just eaten as a jam on toast. Here, I've also got some uh, sourdough starter sitting. I just fed that this morning because I want to make some sourdough English muffins to toss in the freezer. Kitchen is clean. Dishes are done. I do have dish pan in the sink um, waiting for more dishes because I, I know I'm going to be doing more dishes. And over here, I have my pot... Uh, of sugar, I have four cups of sugar in here, ready to make my jam. I have my uh, water over here that I boiled my jars in. Once I've boiled my jars for about 10 or 15 minutes, I toss them into the oven and I let them sit there on a cookie tray where they stay warm. I leave them on 220 and I just let them sit in there. And then when I make my jam, that's where I'm going to be canning it. Over here, I have this for my jam, my secret ingredient. And here we are, um, I've got some tomato soup cans out because we're also going to be making some cabbage rolls. So uh, we just, we harvested a couple of our cabbage from the garden. Oh my gosh, they were huge. So thankful they didn't split. We got them last night before the big rains hit. Uh, rained all night, heavy rains, thunder. Um, today, supposed to rain off and on all day. It's Managed to get outside and get some rhubarb before it started raining again. It was kind of the in-between time. I may need to go out and get more, I'm not sure, because I am going to make two batches of my uh, jam. So I'm going to finish getting my rhubarb chopped up. Now I have washed all of this rhubarb really well, and um, that's all I do. I just pick it and I wash it. I don't soak it in anything. Uh, and all the uh, bits and pieces to it, except for the leaves. I don't, um, those are poisonous. I give everything to our chickens, so. And I do give the rhubarb in moderation. I'm not sure if they can have a whole lot of it, but I do know that the, po the leaves are poisonous to animals and humans, so. They don't get any of those. I want to get all of this rhubarb chopped up and uh, six cups. I'm, I'm doing six cups of rhubarb. I'm going to put it in my pot of sugar and let it set for about 20 or 30 minutes just so that it'll soften and bring out the juices in the rhubarb. I don't get super picky about these long strings. If they kind of continue to not cut while I'm cutting this, dicing this up, then I'll pull it off and I'll throw it aside. But other than that, whatever cuts up gets put in with everything else because there's a lot of nutrients and vitamins in the skin, so I like to have all of that in there.
As far as size, I'm not getting too specific on size. They're just little bite-sized pieces, maybe half-inch pieces. Some are a lot smaller than that, but that's okay. Okay, Joe's going to go get some more rhubarb so that I'll have it for the next batch. Okay, I have my six cups. Now I'm going to add this to my pot of sugar. Okay, this is six cups of chopped rhubarb and it is four cups of sugar. So what I'm going to do is just stir this in here and mix all of that up together and that's going to draw all of the juices. The sugar's gonna draw all the juices out of the rhubarb and it's gonna get nice and wet and watered down. So we're gonna let it sit, like I said, 20, 30 minutes and we'll come back to it. Okay, so while that is sitting for a little bit, I'm going to get started on cutting up uh, the rhubarb for the next batch. Joe has gone out to get more of that rhubarb, so I'm, I don't have a whole lot to cut up right now. I have one stalk. So when he gets in, I'll cut more. Right now I'm gonna get this one stalk chopped up. Once I get all of this rhubarb chopped up, I know I'm still gonna have a little bit of time, so I'm gonna run down and grab some blueberries out of the freezer and get those measured out. We only need two cups of blueberries. So I grab two cups of those and when we need them, we will have them all ready. Sorry, this is kind of noisy. All right, all of this goes to compost or chickens, whichever. Joe just went out to the rhubarb batch. I was on my way out to the compost and just passing him by, so he got quite a bit of rhubarb here. I tried to pick the younger, tender stalks rather than the bigger ones. I like the smaller better. They look so good. I'm so glad. The end of July and we're still going strong with these. Let's head out to the compost. Um, I did decide to take the rhubarb um, pieces out to the compost. I could have waited and taken it all out together when um, I finished doing what he's bringing in, but I wanted to try and catch him over at the rhubarb patch. I didn't. <laughs> he's already done. He's a lot quicker than I thought he would be. So um, I decided to throw the rhubarb scraps into the compost for the reason being that some of those stringy strands. I was afraid the chickens might choke on them, so um, once a mama, always a mama. <laughs> okay, but while I'm out here, I am going to show you our rhubarb patch. This is doing so well. I mean, before, if we could get it up off the ground five inches, we were lucky, but um, it's right here on the side of the hoop house, the greenhouse, and it's doing beautiful just beautiful so you can see all the new growth that's coming in there too so this is a lot later than we usually get our rhubarb but it's so so nice to have I'm I'm glad that it's still doing well because we use it so much now a lot of people will cut rhubarb when they're um, harvesting it but you don't want to cut it what you want to do is you want to grasp it down low. You want to twist and pull. See, you've got it right, not really by the root, by the bottom, bottom of the stem. And that's where it pulls from. That's the correct way to do it because it will come back. It'll come back over and over again. So I try to make sure that I am pulling any seed pods on here. I don't let seed pods grow. I, um, I do take those off 
because it keeps this going a lot longer if I take the seed pods off. And I do not see any seed pods growing, so that's a good sign. So I do have this next batch all set to go for the jam. We have the rhubarb and the sugar. Can you see how that's all started to uh, liquefy, I guess? It's, it's drawing all the liquid out of the rhubarb and, and really getting nice and wet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the heat on and I'm going to bring this up to a boil. The heat is on. I've got it on medium. I'm going to let this boil for 10 minutes uncovered. So then once it's boiled for 10 minutes, I'm going to add my blueberries and then we'll go from there. This is gonna be good. Joe is downstairs uh, gathering up ingredients for the um, cabbage rolls. As I had mentioned, we're making cabbage rolls. I think I mentioned that. Did I mention that? <laughs> we're also making cabbage rolls. Um, stuffed cabbage. Uh, we, are, we are going to uh, get those going, make quite a few of them, as many as we can, and we're going to put them in the freezer for later on this winter. Um, we're trying to do better at prepping meals, um, throwing them in the freezer to have like when, you know, you've had a really busy day and you want to pull something out really quick or you just don't feel like cooking. Um, you can just pull something out already made, homemade from, um, food that you have homegrown. So while I am going to be making this jam, Joe's going to be working on the filling for the cabbage rolls. So... He'll work on that and I'll show you as he works on it what he's adding so you'll get an idea of what we put into those and how to make them yourself. Difference between a boil and a simmer is a simmer can be stirred down and a boil cannot. So that's a good way to know when to set your timer. <laughs> this is to when to uh, start the boil. As soon as this starts to boil good, I'm going to lower my heat to medium low, just so that this doesn't boil up over. I hate that when that does that. It's such a nasty smell when it does it. Okay, we are at a full rolling boil. Can you see it's boiling? Even though I'm stirring, it's just bubbling right up. We're going to keep stirring this. I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes. Turn down to medium low and let this do its thing. If you have never made jam before, this is the easiest jam to make. It's incredibly easy. There's, it's just, it, it goes fast when you do it. So you want to have everything um, ready. I, I used to be really intimidated by making jam, canning anything really, but it's, it's, it's fine. It's really a lot easier than you think. Just dive in and, and go for it. And you'll be surprised at how well you can do. All right, this is boiling good here. I've got a few minutes left on the timer. So I'm just going to keep my eye on this and give it a good stir every now and again. I'm just kind of getting everything together that I need for the next step of jam making, which would be a little dish filled with some white vinegar and a rag. I use that to wipe the top of my jars before I seal them. And I have my ladle, which is a measuring cup. And this is my little um, funnel. I had to ask Joe what this is called. My little glass funnel. My sister got this for me. She found it at a yard sale and it's indispensable in my kitchen. I love it. So I have that ready to pour my jam into my jars. I have just over a minute left on my time for my rhubarb. It's almost done boiling. Once this is boiled, I am going to add my blueberries. These were previously frozen. And this is what I'm using for pectin. This is berry blue jello. This is just something that uh, I found in my local grocery store and i don't know i the reason why i used it is because it it will act as pectin and it would give a blueberry flavor sort of kind of like 
<laughs> and it would help with the the blue color the the jam so I don't know it works anyway this is what I've been doing for the last two years so that is how I make my jello my uh, jam we're almost done here less than a minute left my timer just went off just as I was doing something else so <gasps> I have to run to this okay I'm gonna add my blueberries it's two cups of blueberries and mine were frozen and that is fine. Okay, we're going to let this come back up to a boil for about five minutes. And then we're going to turn the heat off and add our jello. Might take a minute to come back up to boil because like I said, these blueberries were frozen. Joe is prepping for the cabbage rolls. He's chopping up some peppers that we had sliced and put in the freezer. Also some sweet onion he's got there to put in with that. So he's just getting the filling stuff ready. Okay, my timer went off. Look how blue that is. So what I'm going to do is I am going to shut the heat off completely. And I'm going to add my packets of Jello. Just one packet per batch. So I'm just adding one pack to this batch, and then the other pack of Jello uh, will be for the next batch. This is going to be the pectin that really thickens this up. These are three ounce packets of Jello. So it's just a berry blue jello. This is definitely my husband's favorite. Does that smell good? He's over here inspecting. It smells so good. Okay. So now it's time to get the jars out of the oven. And we're going to fill these. All right, these are nice and hot. So we don't ever want to put hot liquid into cold jars or the jar will break. I'm going to leave a half inch headspace. These are half pint jars. You want half inch headspace to each one. I'm just gonna quickly fill these each one before I cap them. Okay, so what this made is this over there. Three, six, seven, eight, eight half pints. This is kind of one of those recipes that you eyeball. Neither one of us are very good at following um, a recipe. We're just kind of more a pinch of this and a dash of that. Um, so uh, by taste, by look, um, by feel, I don't know, that's how we both cook, so. This mixture is pretty much like a meatloaf mixture, stuffed peppers. You put your Italian seasonings, um, onion and garlic powder, salt and pepper. The onions are roughly chopped. They're not too small, they're not too big, just kind of medium size. These, these are Vidalia, Vidalia onions. They're a sweet onion. Vidalia is just the name of the place that they grow. Vidalia, Georgia, I believe, correct? Yes. They are a very good onion. So he is just going to chop those up. He's adding them to a bowl. And he has some other ingredients here. We have some instant rice that uh, is homemade. We had um, done that ourselves. We have some ground beef and we have some sweet sausage. So all of that along with some spices, um, you know, garlic powder, onion powder, salt, pepper, 
um, Italian seasoning, all of those will be going in the mixture as well. Amounts, I guess, are dependent on what you like. These are some canned tomatoes that we did, and I'm going to use those in the sauce, as well as some tomato soup. That's his favorite way to make sauce. We'll be showing you step by step, or he will be showing you this more than I will as we go along. I'm going to now do the meat mixture. I've got about three pounds of hamburger and a package of Perry Sweet Italian Sausage. I don't know how you pronounce that. We get this hamburger at my nephew's store. We buy it with a 10 pound package and then we um, freeze it all up in one pound packages. We get a pretty good deal on it, so we try to buy that when they have the sales. I'm opening these sausages up, opening them up and um, taking them out of the casing. I was brought up eating these. My mom used to make them a lot back when I was younger. And um, we don't make them as often as she did, but they're for sure nice to have. We're going to try to freeze some of these so we can have them throughout the winter. My mom used to call them pigs in a blanket. They're actually called cabbage rolls, the correct name, but Weeks in a blanket work for me. Definitely, this was one of our kids' favorites uh, whenever Joe would make this. I'm taking a break from the hot jam, that I'm, the pot that I'm stirring. This is a, a messy job for sure. So, and this is also something that you can do ahead. If you uh, didn't have time for all of this in one day, you could definitely make uh, the filling ahead, put it in your refrigerator, leave it in there and then just work, you know, split everything over a couple of days because this is a long process. So as you'll see, um, we were just not able to do this over two days time. So we're going to kind of mash it all into today. Joe is still working on the cabbage rolls and I'm still working on the second batch of jam. I want to show you something that I did. I have more blueberries down in the basement in our storage in uh, one of our freezers down there, but I didn't want to go down and get it. So there's just so much going on up here that requires my attention. He's busy over there. I don't want to ask him to watch my stuff here so it doesn't boil over. So instead of running downstairs to get the quarter cup of blueberries that I need to make the two cups, I opted for throwing some raspberries in there. It's just about a quarter of a cup of raspberries, just enough to top off my two cups, and you're never gonna know. You're never gonna know the difference. So that is what I mean when I say that we're just kind of a uh, pinch of this and a dash of that cooks. Um, just throw in what you need when you need it. It's all fruit. It's all going to mesh with their flavors and it's going to be perfectly fine. It's not going to change anything as far as setting up. It's just going to mix right in with everything else and you'll never know. I'm now adding some spices in here and also some stewed tomatoes that were made from uh, everything come out of our garden from last year. The onions, peppers. Uh, basil, tomatoes, garlic. I don't know if you put anything else in there, but that's all from last year's garden. I'm first adding some Italian seasoning. Okay, next I'm adding some onion powder, which is usually good on anything as far as I'm concerned. I love onions. I love garlic. A couple of shakes left in there, won't hurt. Okay, next goes our garlic. Some salt and pepper. We use the pink Himalayan sea salt. 
Next, I'm adding some Parmesan cheese. Okay, I'm going to use part of these stewed tomatoes in the meat mixture, and I'll use the rest to pour over them in the pot. I'm also going to add some tomato soup to this. Okay, our onions. I think I chopped up quite a few too many. Red peppers. And some instant rice. Julie made this instant rice out of regular rice. She just uh, cooked it and then dehydrated it. And that'll last a long, long time. So now we give it the mix. Instant rice is, is a great uh, extra to have in your pantry. We use it quite a bit for different different dishes. I think I'm going to put that other can of tomato soup in here. All right, my other jars are uh, done. The jam is done. So I'm adding everything in here. So you can see I'm full house down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this on here. And that's going to give my jars something to sit on so that I can stack, holy cow those are hot, so that I can stack the jars and can more at one time then instead of waiting for to do another batch separate this will work. If these were bigger jars I could not do that. Okay so I'm gonna get more water put in here. You always want, if you're water bath canning, you want your water to be at least two inches above your jars. And I'm going to add water to this and then we're going to water bath can these for 10 minutes. The final ingredient I'm adding into these cabbage rolls, the meat mixture, uh, was some brown sugar with the tomatoes and the tomato sauce going in here. The acid from the tomatoes, um, this cuts the acid down a little bit. You don't put a lot in it, but just, just a bit. It's a dirty job. Somebody's got to do it. He knows it's not going to be me. <laughs> He's much better at this than I am, so I let him go ahead and do it. So we are going to put this in the refrigerator, I think he, he told you that, until we're ready to put these together. So he's going to do that. I'm waiting for the jam to uh, process. I've got that in the water bath canner for 10 minutes. And as soon as that's done, we're going to use that same pot to put the cabbage in so we can boil that down and soften the leaves so that we can peel them off the cabbage. This is our cabbage. We just cut this last night in the garden. I mean, it's huge. Look at my head and you look at this cabbage. <laughs> it's, it's a big head of cabbage. So we're going to boil this and soften the leaves. And then what we'll do is, actually, we don't need these leaves out here. We are going to um, peel the leaves off as they soften and then get them rolled up, stuff them roll them up and get them ready to cook. So meat mixture is in the refrigerator. He had some leftover onions. We just put them in a Ziploc bag, toss those into the freezer. Also in the refrigerator, we had, um, this is our uh, big pot of bean whole beans. We've been making a lot of bean whole beans because we put them away 
in uh, the freezer for winter. Uh, it's not just us who eats them. Our son loves them. His dad loves them. So we share the joy. So we like to have a lot in the freezer. So this is uh, another batch that we did. And these are the yellow eye. The um, last few batches we've done are the yellow eye. We are going to do the Jacob's cattle beans. We want to try those next. But for right now, we do have plenty of beans to bake. So we got our work cut out for us. <laughs> Ten, yeah, these are 10 the 10 pounds. Yeah, 10 pounds of beans. So those are the yellow eye. That's what these ones are. And these are the Jacob's cattle beans. All right, so I am going to grab a measure. And Joe has labeled all of these Ziplocs. And we're going to put the beans in. Usually one of us is the holder and one of us is the pourer. just so that we can keep the bags as clean as we can. Doesn't always work, but we try. This is just another food that you can have put in your freezer. It's great to pull out, easy to thaw. Um, it's nice to have in your freezer when you want something quick. And food right now is becoming expensive, expensive <laughs> or hard to find. So, uh, we always tend to make extra of anything that we have. And um, what extra we have, we throw in the freezer. So that's kind of what today is. We're, we're just, a lot of this, we're making the cabbage rolls to throw in the freezer. The jam, if you want to throw that in the freezer, you can put that in the freezer as well. Instead of processing it, water bathing it, just put the jars in the freezer and they'll last in the freezer for about six months. The jam is still coming up to a boil. It's a huge pot, so it's going to take a bit. So what I'm going to do right now is on my list, um, we have a spaghetti squash that we need to cook. I will, um, we'll probably have that for supper tonight. So, and I have some homemade spaghetti squash that I pulled out of the freezer and that's in the refrigerator right now. So we'll use that. And that's why it's so important to, um, have that extra stuff in your freezer. So I don't have to make homemade spaghetti sauce today because I've already got some that I can just pull right out of the freezer. But right now what I wanna do is start some sourdough muffins, English muffins. So I usually start that a day ahead. So um, I've been working on getting my sourdough uh, starter going. It was in the refrigerator, so I've had it out for a couple of days. It's nice and bubbly, so it's perfect to use right now. So I'm gonna get this um, started for uh, some English muffins and um, get the base for that and I will bake them off in the morning. My sourdough English muffin recipe is one that I get from Farmhouse on Boone. I can link that recipe below in my description box. And I've got two cups of regular all-purpose flour, one cup of water, and this is filtered water from our Berkey. And to that, I am also going to add half a cup of starter. You can see this is nice and bubbly. That is when you know it's the perfect time to use. This is going to sit on my counter and just sit here overnight. Not going to do anything with it. Just going to throw a beeswax cover over the top and let it sit until morning and I'll work with it then. The jam is done. So I told Joe, I don't know why, but for this, the first batch did eight half pint jars and the second batch did seven half pint jars. And I think the reason is because I used bigger pieces of rhubarb and he used all the smaller pieces. So maybe it just didn't make as much. I don't know. I don't have any other excuse as to why. I don't know. I might even make one more batch because we do use a lot of this. Right now, Joe and I are going to run outside. There's a lot of purple clover. We pick a lot of that, use it for, um, we dry it and use it for teas. We're back from our little foraging expedition. I feel like I am a sweaty mess. 
he looks a lot better than I do. But let me show you what we got. This is what Joe picked. A nice box full of um, clover, the purple clover. So we can use this. And they're, this is nettles, uh, stinging nettles they're called, because you want to wear gloves whenever you're handling them. Those little tiny little, you see those little furry things? They pick right into your skin and stay there and they cause it like a little rash so that's how they're given the name stinging nettles but nettles are really good for you as are clover so we're going to dry this and we use this for teas i may do a couple of tinctures i'm not sure yet but i am definitely going to dry them for tea i'd say we came in Went out and got the nettles and the clover just in the nick of time because it is pouring rain out here right now. We've got some thunder, some lightning, and lots and lots of rain. We have cabbage in a big pot of water. This is actually the pot that we used for um, canning the jam. That is a huge head of cabbage. So what I'm doing is I'm just working on rotating it around and it almost means holding it in the water at some points, you know, kind of holding it around. Whoops, sorry, you're fogging up. Uh, with the spoon just to um, soften it a little bit and then we're taking it off one leaf at a time. I do have a couple leaves off right now. These are huge. This is one big cabbage. You see my hand and look how big this cabbage leaf is. So we've got a couple leaves off and what we're going to do is just start taking them off and then rolling, filling them and rolling them. I try to roll it over with the spoon, hold it still, and then I take my knife and I cut at the base of the leaf, that little stem right at the base of that leaf, and try to free it before it rolls over again. That's how I've been doing it. So, and then kind of go to the next leaf and the next leaf. I mean, it's going to want to roll the way it wants to because it's just whatever side is heavier, it's going to want to go on that side. I'm now making the sauce for the cabbage rolls. I'm putting in the rest of the crushed tomatoes, or they're not crushed, they're uh, stewed tomatoes. And I'm going to add, going to add another can or maybe two. Putting in some tomato soup. I don't measure anything out here. This is just my own, um, just throwing stuff together, I guess, the way we like it. Some people use spaghetti sauce. Uh, some people use just tomato sauce to cover them in, but. That's the one thing about when we cook stuff, we really just eyeball it. I mean, just eyeball and taste. You know, add the different seasonings. Don't be afraid to taste it as you go. Um, it's really just creating your own sauce. So, you know, like he said, some people will add a spaghetti sauce, save them from making, you know, their own or save them from all this step. Some just use tomato sauce to do this and just, you know, season that up. Uh, Joe has always been someone who likes to create his own Thing. So he just uses a bit of um, different seasonings. So if you are doing this, you know, just eyeball the amounts to what works for your family. Um, you know, just do it to taste. There's no right or wrong. This is all going to be something really great to have. You can, you know, take it out um, and have it thawed and, and heat it up for supper. You are working late or the kids have sports or you know, you have a meeting or something, you know, going on and you need, uh, you know that you need to have a quick dinner. Okay, so we have everything all spread out here. 
hopefully you guys can see everything that's going on. I'll try to put everything where you can see it. These are my cabbage leaves that I'm going to be reaching for. And these are, this is the one that I'm filling at a time. Joe is just filling those, putting the filling on for me and I am going to roll them. So it's basically like rolling a burrito. And then you just set it in the, the uh, dish. This is a low and slow cooking thing. So like I said, you can do this um, a day ahead and be done with a lot of it. Okay, so I'm going to put that down there, fold up the sides, and then I'm going to roll. And that just encompasses it all in there. And then we're just going to put it in the big bowl with the sauce on it. Okay, get another one. We're going to go as far as we can with the meat that we have. Anything left over, if you have more meat than what you have, cabbage, that's fine. Freeze it and reuse it. Um, use it to stuff peppers. You can use it for a meatloaf. Uh, works great for any of that. You've got your meat, your rice, your vegetables, all in one. You can also use breadcrumbs in here if you wanted to. Pretty flexible recipe. I don't think you can mess it up. Okay, we're gonna put a little bit of sauce on top of these. We have this layer done. A little bit there. And then we're gonna add some more. Okay, you can see this is the pot. It is filled, filled to the brim. So we started another smaller one. And I also, I wanna put a little more sauce on that. I also took some of the cabbage left over and I just kind of ripped it up a little bit and put some of that in here just to have some extra cabbage in there. It's a good way to use it. You could also fry it up with some onions and some bacon. That would be really good. Um, anyway, you do it. You could, you know, just pan fry it up for dinner or something. Okay, we're just gonna fill this. And these are going to bake. I'm gonna say an hour and a half, an hour, an hour and a half. They take a while. The smaller one might not take as long as the bigger one, but they do take a little bit. You wanna make sure that all of the meat gets cooked and uh, then we'll take them out, let them cool, and throw the rest in the freezer. Okay, so getting ready to put these in the oven, low and slow is key. So we're only putting our oven at 300. And like I said, it's gonna be an hour, an hour and a half. Um, so I'm gonna put those in here. Hopefully both will fit. These are really heavy pots. It is severe out there. <laughs> They're like really high wind gusts. I don't know if you can see those trees over in the distance a little bit. The tops of those are just blowing right over. It's just sheets of rain. I mean, it's just unbelievable. The electricity keeps going off. <laughs> so I don't know if we're gonna get those cabbage rolls cooked or not. Guys, this is horrible. <laughs> Look at all of this rain. I mean, it is ferocious. Coming right in on the porch. Unbelievable. The water that's on here. I mean, it, this is just... Unreal, the winds are just blowing it this way. Just like sheep. 
I mean, it's overwhelming the getters. I wish so badly we could send this terrain to all of you people with the that are going through the drought right now. This has been our summer. This right here. And this is going to be the next few days. Okay, guys. Guess what? Can you see this? No power. The oven is off. We have no power. Uh, wind has blown stuff everywhere. There's lines that are down. Um, starting to pass over us now, but we still have absolutely no electricity. It's been probably about an hour now. I'm not sure how much longer it's going to be. Um, and the cabbage rolls are still in the oven. <laughs> I don't know, we're hoping that this is fixed quickly so that we can get cooking. Okay, so this is what we have resorted to. The electricity is not going to be on for a while, so we're putting a little bit of water in with this just to make sure that there's enough liquid in there and just let them simmer and cook that way. We have lanterns going because we do have oil lamps what we typically use at night so I don't know <laughs> time will tell these won't be ruined we won't let them get ruined we're just gonna do low and slow on the cooktop the electricity is back on it's midnight and um, these are cooked we did them on the stove top so let me show you what they look like these are gonna sit and cool before we put them into the refrigerator and um, then we will get them packed for the freezer tomorrow once they've had a good night of <clears throat> excuse me a good night of cooling and um, settling and we'll worry about that tomorrow i am very tired joe is very tired so we're going to bed good morning it's a new day yesterday was quite the doozy we did not expect to lose electricity for so long. Uh, it was 4.30 when it went out and I think I had mentioned that it was midnight when we finally finished the cabbage rolls. It was 11.15, I think. The clock was blinking. It was 11.15. Um, we didn't expect to lose it for that long. <laughs> it was way longer. We didn't expect to lose it at all, but we thought it when we did that it would come back on a lot quicker. So we kind of waited on the cabbage rolls a little bit, then finally decided that was not going to come back on. So we pulled them out of the oven, put them on the stove top and finished cooking them there. We just did low and slow because we didn't want them to burn on. It's not something you can stir or get to the bottom of. Um, so you really want to keep them a little bit low. We just added a little bit of water and simmered them. So I'm going to wrap all of this up. Um, I do want to come back before um, I end this video. I'll come back and I'll show you um, how we wrap our cabbage rolls and get them ready for the freezer. So when next you see me, that is what we're going to be doing. Okay, so I'm back to do the cabbage rolls. I, they sat in the refrigerator. Actually, they sat for a couple of days in the refrigerator until I could get to them. So I am going to bag them up and get them put in the freezer so that we have them put away for quick, easy meal when we want it. So I have my cabbage rolls and I have a, just an old Tupperware Kool-Aid pitcher. I'm doing this on my own because my husband is busy doing his stuff and he's offered to help, but I know he's got stuff to do, so I'm not going to take him up on it. So what I'm doing is trying to create two more hands. So what I did was I took my baggie, I'm putting it inside my Tupperware pitcher, and I'm taking some clothes pins and I'm putting them on each side. You know those things that you buy that clip and they they do this for you well they cost money and this is free so that's why i'm doing it this way so this is going to be my second set of hands and i am easily going to put 
these cabbage rolls into the baggie. I'm gonna add a little bit of sauce in each one as I put it in here. Cause you really, you wanna add a little bit of that. So when you heat them up, it's, you've got all that goodness to go with it. And I'm gonna unhook this, pull it out. Any mess is inside there. You wanna make sure that you label the bag what you're putting in it because you're not gonna remember. I've tried that game, it doesn't work. Um, and you want to put the amount and the date. So just put that in there and then I'm, I've got a dish here set aside, just a big bowl and I'm putting them all in here. That way I can use that to carry down to the freezer and put it all in there at once. Okay, so let's move on. We're going to put another one in here. And this will be my tip of the day for you, helpful hands. I don't know if you can see, there we go. Tip you up a little bit more. Okay, so then I'm going to take another cabbage roll, put it in here. My husband is on the side here, probably thinking I've gone crazy. But my mother always said, where there's a will, there's a way. By golly. I'm gonna find that way. All right, fill this up. Now I already did the smaller of these two bowls. That's all bagged up. So I have that done. So I just have this bigger bowl left. And I'm gonna tell you how many I have when we get to the end because I didn't count them when we did them. Did you count them, Joe? Mm -hmm. He didn't count them either, so. These are really huge. I'm only putting two in each one. <laughs> Some of them are really big, but I'm gonna get them in there along with a little bit of juice. And these are going to be so good later on. This is just a really great tip to save you money and it saves you time because time seems to be that elusive thing that just runs from all of us and we never seem to have enough of it. Even though we all get the same amount of time in a day, we just never seem to get enough of it. Okay, put this one in here. Joe, do you wanna start counting those bags in there? Each one has two in it. If you can count those, I'll count these and then we'll know how much we have. Oh, whoops, gotta put some juice in here. Um, we'll know how much we have. You got 12, okay. So here's 14. I really made a mess of that one that got right down into that container. Okay, you wanna write me out, let me see. Okay, so I've got 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It's going to be 20. So we're gonna have 10 meals, which is great. So I need two more bags from you, Joe, please. That's 10 meals of cabbage rolls. So we can spread that out over the winter along with you know the other meals that we have created and saving time. Now I also did um, a second batch of sourdough English muffins this morning real quick. And the first batch I put into the freezer and the second batch sitting right here Second batch, I've got I think eight or nine of them in there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make breakfast sandwiches with those. I'll do up some eggs, some sausage, put that all together and have those to pull out of the freezer uh, real quick for breakfast. That'll, a lot of the time that's helpful because Usually Joe has a muffin. We always have muffins made and those are something that we keep in the freezer as well. But sometimes he gets tired of having muffins and he likes to have something else. So 
breakfast sandwich is a really good thing to pull out of the freezer and have already made. Here we go. 10 dinners, lunches, whatever you want to call them, all made and ready to pull out whenever we need them. I went ahead, got the eggs all done for uh, breakfast sandwiches. I have some maple sausage here, um, some sausage here, some cheese, my English muffins. I'm just gonna whip these up really quick. Joe is going to help me when he gets a minute. He's been doing dishes for me while I, I make the mess and he's cleaning the mess. So all I'm going to do is put an egg on the English muffin. This meat is pre-cooked, it's already frozen. I'm just going to put it on there because we're going to freeze it again anyway. Put a slice of cheese, put that together. I have a sandwich and I'm sending it over to Joe and he is going to wrap it for me. So that is going to be what the assembly line is. And we're gonna have eight sandwiches, breakfast sandwiches in the freezer. All ready for whenever we decide we want a quick breakfast, which is really great. Or if we decide we're just, we don't feel like making a breakfast. We want it already made. It's already made. This is a, uh, Quick and easy. You could even heat these up on the run, like if you're headed out somewhere for the day and you want a quick breakfast to grab before you go, this is already made and it's healthy. Sourdough English muffins are really good for you. So we finished. These are all the sandwiches. We have eight of them and these are going to go into a big gallon size Ziploc. We're going to label that and have it in the freezer for whenever we decide we want to have a breakfast sandwich. So that's cabbage rolls, breakfast sandwiches. What else did we do? We have jam put away. We have stuffed peppers in our freezer. Um, we have English muffins without um, anything in them, just plain English muffins. We wanted to take those out and just toast an English muffin. Uh, lots and lots of things um, prepped ahead. So this big bag of breakfast sandwiches, which is exciting to me. So this is really time saving. It's easy to do. I mean, you're making a meal anyway. Make extra of that meal. And then once it cooled, usually like a lasagna or something, we will eat a serving out of it. I'll put it in the fridge overnight so it sits, it's solid and easier to work with. Then I'll cut it into serving sizes and bag it up and put it in the freezer and we've got it for later when we want to pull it out. So things like that, just think about those things. If you're making one thing, just make an extra. If you don't think you're going to have enough of that one thing to throw in the freezer, just make an extra one and put that one in the freezer. It's good to have and you will love the time savings. So thank you for joining me today and I hope you learned something, I hope you were inspired. And I make videos every week on Simple Living, Homestead Grown and All Things Home. So until next time.